close your eyes, watch your breath, and watch your mind as it's watching the breath to make sure it doesn't go running off. We have to look after our minds because our minds can be troublemakers. You can be sitting around perfectly normal and all of a sudden something comes up in the mind, a memory from the past or a fear about the future, and it can really pain you. And if, the, if you're feeling weak at that point, then the pain just overcomes you. So you want to be able to get the mind under control, both for your sake and for the sake of the people around you. Because we live in this world and everybody wants happiness. And some people think about how their happiness affects other people, and other people don't care. When you're meditating, you belong to the first group, because you realize that you want happiness that lasts. For happiness to last, it has to be happiness that doesn't cause anybody to suffer. There was one time when King Vasenity was up in his palace with his queen, and in a tender moment he turns to her and asks her, Is anybody you love more than yourself? And you know what he's thinking. He wants her to say, Yes, Your Majesty, I love you more than I love myself. And for a Hollywood movie, that's probably what she'd say, but this is the Pali Canon, and she's no fool. She says, no, there's nobody I love more than myself. And how about you? Is there anyone you love more than yourself? And he has to admit there's nobody he loves more than himself. So that's the end of that scene. So the king goes down to see the Buddha, and the Buddha says, you know, she's right. And then he goes on to say, you can search the whole world over and not find anybody that you love more than yourself. And in the same way, everybody else loves themselves just as fiercely. But from that he doesn't conclude that it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world, and then he concludes that you should never harm anyone. What he means, of course, is if your happiness depends on harming other people, then it's not going to last. They're going to do what they can to destroy it. So you have to look for a happiness that's responsible. Some people say that when people meditate they're being irresponsible, they're just looking after themselves. But actually they're looking for happiness in a responsible way, finding happiness in a way that doesn't take anything away from anyone else, doesn't harm anyone else, and doesn't harm them. And that's the kind of happiness we want. You think about the Buddha, he's concerned about your happiness, that's why he gave this teaching. And your happiness, of course, is something that only you can experience, just like your pain is something only you can experience. And here he left behind a teaching that was just specifically for your pain, whoever you are. We feel our pains alone, we feel our happiness alone. In our, in our search to get rid of our pains and to find happiness, we impose on other people. So he's teaching us a way to put an end to our own suffering, find happiness, and not impose any weight on anybody else at all. When you think about it, it's a pretty amazing teaching, a very compassionate teaching. And the question is, do you have compassion enough for yourself to want to follow it? If you do, this is how you do it. Be generous, take the precepts, observe the precepts, and then train your mind. So it focuses on happiness that comes from inside, that happiness that's good all around.